ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Damien Perot, Global SVP of Design at Accor, to discuss design's role in the evolution of society and what that means for the future of hospitality as the lines between work, life, and play continue to disappear. Hey, Damien, how are you this morning? Or evening, I um, should say, for you in Paris. Morning, evening, whatever. I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, how are you well? I'm doing well. We're very excited to uh, have this show today and to uh, be talking around design and innovation through, through all possible forms. And, you know, I, I interviewed you a few years ago, and one of the quotes that you had said to me um, was that aesthetics are only 20% of the job of a good designer, and the rest is the ability to envision how people will live today and tomorrow. Uh, so how do you envision people will live tomorrow in the near future, and what role do you see design playing, uh, both in society and then maybe in travel as well? I, I would like to, to start by saying that, uh, you know, I strongly believe that uh, love is stronger than, uh, than anything and that will, that will never change. And that's why people will want to live, connect, discover, have fun, be surprised, and, and they also want to work and to work hard during this period where everyone has, let's say, reduced... Uh, the, the, the business is really impacted. People would like to come back to work. But the, in, the, in the near future, they do not want to compromise. They need more time. They need more quality time. But that also why people will want to, to do everything at 10 minutes from home. Immobility is the future. And hospitality is the answer. And that's where design and designers will have a crucial role to play. Designing the cities, hotels, with uh, new spaces, new functionality, a new life. And the process has already started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, speaking of the process already starting, I know Accor has really been on the idea of hybrid hospitality or augmented hospitality, something that you guys have been talking about in your taglines and even in your marketing too. But I think sort of that ethos is around work, life, and play, and a core as a brand and as a business trying to be where people are, not only when they're traveling, not only when they're as a hotel guest, uh, but those other moments that those other, you know, 50 weeks of the year where they might not be traveling. So with the pandemic, with everything that's going on in the world right now, and everything sort of converged on its own, do you feel like you guys have been prepared for this? Is this actually been some sort of opportunity or what's what, what what's what's your whole outlook on that uh for i mean we we start i think uh, since uh, five years to completely change uh what we what we were doing uh, definitively and it really impact the design before we really used to to design our hotels uh, for travelers and that was the, the really the main the main focus and uh, and now it's completely different we completely completely change that because first of all travelers when they when they when they travel they visit a city they would really would like to feel uh, uh, the country they want to to really uh, have that uh, local experience and the local experience is not really through design it's most of the time it's very gimmical or or it's uh, premier degré as we say uh, as we say in, in in France they want to meet people and that's, that's the local experience. And uh, that's, that's one of the reasons. And the other reason is, is that there is lots of people uh, living around the hotel and just, they just pass through the hotel and they never stop. And there, inside, there is everything they need. Mm -hmm. So that's why now we, we, change, we are completely changing the way we are designing hotel and we, we, we design now place to live. And we don't start, for example, with the reception desk, with the transactional, let's say, experience in the hospitality. Uh, when you enter and uh, someone say uh, check in or check out, we, we, we change that. We remove the reception. You enter in a place where it's, it's completely different. You have a place to live, to work, to have fun, to 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 do everything you 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 want and everything you need. And then you meet people, and that's mm -hmm. that's what people people want. So. Of course, it's a it's a big change, and with this crisis and the pandemic, uh, it accelerates everything. It's it's like it's like having a new opportunity because people have more need close to the place they live. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I think something, I, I forget what the stat was, it was from the UN where we were tracking towards mass urbanization at such a crazy alarming rate. I think even now, uh, I think 70% of US citizens are currently living in cities. Uh, but I do think we are also hearing right now a lot around this mass exodus, moving to smaller cities, moving to more rural areas. Um, with society changing so much, how might design dictate how residents are interacting with cities, um, either as travelers or as locals? And how, how are they sort of getting from point A to point B uh, in the midst of a pandemic as safety and health and concerns over confidence are really running amok everywhere? So, uh, so um, what's, what's is, is crazy, if, if you take uh, in, the, in the 2050, uh, more than uh, six, the increase of people living in the in the in the city will be uh, uh, around sixty percent. So it will be massive. Even if few people will live out of the city, uh, the density in the city will, will still be completely uh, will be uh, will be huge. Uh, let's say. So that's uh, that's also why uh, we need to completely change the way we are thinking today. For example, there is lots of projects on uh, mobility uh, in order to, to, to support that, uh, that traffic. Uh, me, I, I, I prefer to say that we need to work on immobility. Immobility okay. really is, is, is something very important because we need to absorb uh, that, that uh, increase of, uh, of, uh, of population. So we need to do everything we can in order that uh, people could do, let's say, 90% of what they need to do around, around, around where they live, a 10-minute 10, 10 walk, for example. Mm -hmm. And it will, it will change everything. And, and so we need to reinvent the mobility as well. And that's why we are working on how do we need to design the hotel, but how do we need also to, 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 to design the new mobility in order to really create a totally different uh, experience uh, within the city. And that's fantastic. Do you have an example of, or can you maybe just lay out what that might look like? Immobility in the cities? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, if I take the example of um, people will uh, will uh, will need uh, to, instead of, of taking the subway to go uh, to their office and spending, uh, half an hour, one hour uh, per, per day, uh, they will just go next door in a place where they have everything to work in good condition, mm -hmm. but not staying alone in their apartment because they still need to, to meet other people and to connect. That's what makes people uh, uh, enrich their, 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 their experience. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's exactly, exactly that. And it's not only through the hotel, we need more little bistro, more little restaurant, more boutique, shop, in order that people will find everything they need, but they will still need to travel. They will still need to meet the doctor, or, or which is not maybe around where they're living, etc. So we, we still have traffic, but we promote immobility. And on top of that, it's, it's a, also another opportunity uh, that people will maybe escape the city and then only uh, uh, stay in the city for two days in order being able to meet their colleagues, work together, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And then they come back at home. So that's why there is a new hospitality or an increase of the, the hospitality, which is the extended stay. And uh, for us, I mean, the, the, the growth of extended stay since uh, 2070s is more than 20%. And that's will will be will uh, dramatically evolve uh, uh, again. And you know, with people traveling less now, are you guys thinking about anything in the you know more residential real estate space, building those sort of hubs uh, within cities right now uh, for people to more live in? So you know, sort of yeah. reversing where you guys have come from. Yeah, and that's that's why we've uh, already uh, launched. Uh, I mean, I think it's a few days ago a dedicated platform for that. Uh, a dedicated platform where we have uh, 50, 50,000 apartments, villas, uh, really dedicated for extended stay. And that's that's a that's a real need today. And and we do that through uh, I think more than fifteen brands, 
uh, from uh, Raffles, uh, Fairmont, uh, Novotel, uh, Adagio, or even uh, a one fine stay, which is the private rental. So villas, apartment, that's, that's really a new demand. And that's why we, we have this uh, dedicated platform for it. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk a little bit around the design process and how you at a core and the brands that you've either acquired or built or have transformed, how some of those come to life and what, what it takes to build some of those services. Um, so again, you've acquired brands, you've transformed brands and built them on your own. Can you give examples of how those processes might look and how they might be different? For example, we always start uh, when we work on a, on an existing brand, for example, or even on a new on a new brand, new experience. We we always start by uh, uh, diving into, but why are we doing that? Who is the client? Who is the guest? So we really start always with with a human. That's that's the the, the, the first start. When we work on the, the new design philosophy for Novotel, for example. We reset everything. The evolution of the society is, is, is so huge that we just can't only change the decor of a Novotel in order to make the new Novotel. The Novotel need to answer the needs of the client of Novotel uh, today. And then we, uh, we do not uh, uh, define what we what we want we integrate the designer at the really beginning of that uh, that reflection and there is no boundaries we choose the designers because of his um, his eye is is uh, uh, let's say is uh, his uh, vision and uh, his capacity to 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 know uh, 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 and to identify the movement of the evolution of the society. Mm -hmm. And so for a, a brand like Novotel, we've worked simultaneously with uh, four designers, one in South America, one in, Tha in, uh, in, uh, in Thailand, uh, one in Russia, one in, uh, in Europe. And together, we redefine completely the experience of Novotel, keeping the DNA, but changing everything. And that's very important. Creativity is really, uh, 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 really important in the process. If you want to innovate, you really need to be open. And we do not choose a designer with a hospitality designer, really the one who've got that vision of the evolution of the society. And that's, that's really key. And that's when we work uh, uh, for, let's say, to define the design strategy for a brand. For a project, a specific hotel, we, also convince the owner to work with the best designer for 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 his for his project mm -hmm. and it's exactly the same process and i like to say that it's a, it's a love story it's a modern love story because the designer the owner and the brand all together they need to fall in love and when this magic happening it makes great projects mm -hmm. because a great designer Behind a great designer or a great design or a great hotel, there is always a great owner and a great brand, for sure. So you're talking about two very sort of differently minded people, the very creative, optimistic outlook, let's create something, and people who need to be very concerned, rightly so, about the bottom line and making sure that their business is sustainable. Do you find that that clashes? Do you find that, you know, you talked about this idea of they, they need to sort of fall in love with each other. Do you need to make that happen or is it something that happens more naturally? But sometimes it's natural, sometimes it's not. So, you know, uh, sometimes you, you, we all have conviction and very strong ideas. And uh, as, a, as a human people, it's, it's like that. And owners, sometimes they've, they've got their ideas. So we need to, to support each other in order really to open more doors, open more opportunity to increase the profitability. When I'm talking about creativity, I'm not saying that a designer is an artist. A designer is designing something in order to, 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 to make it profitable, uh, to be functional, profitable, and to create an experience and an emotion. We need to consider the designer as a real asset for the project. It's a value a real added value. And so uh, uh, 
there is, a, let's say, a, an investment and a price to, 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 to pay for creativity. And that's, you know, people like uh, Apple, De Vialet, Heineken, Dyson, they understood that. They really invest a lot in design and creativity and, and they really make the difference with, with the competition. So in the hospitality world or in travel overall, do you think that there is a bigger role that a designer as a practice or however we want to define that term as a sort of work focus area, is that being recognized enough? Are those design leaders, creative leaders being brought in at the right time of the process? Or is there another way that we should be thinking about it? I must say that uh, it, it is just the beginning. So to, to be honest, I think um, uh, designers are really considered as a, as a real asset at 20-20%. So, so it's, a, it's a very important uh, uh, role that, that we have together uh, to, to convince, uh, to convince our, our investors uh, that uh, that uh, designers are, are really key. Mm -hmm. And even if, you know, and it works because uh, even if sometime um, we, we have some, some partners who, who have already selected the designers, we said, okay, let's, let's meet other people. And, and they don't want at the beginning. And then after they, okay, uh, agree just to meet a few, few other designers. And then after they are very happy because they, they discover new things. And they realize that finally the opportunity uh, for their project will be uh, will be uh, even, even stronger and how do you make those collaborations happen i know i'm not sure if you're still doing this or not but you used to do a design day at a core where you guys would bring in different uh different designers different creatives and business leaders as well um are you still doing that or what are some other ways that 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 sort of creative collaboration process comes to life we are still we are still doing doing that, investing lots of time, and it starts with a design school, for example, that we organize, for example, a design contest, uh, international design contest with uh, with uh, the, 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 the schools, because uh, it is true that we need to convince uh, investors to work with talented designers, but you also need to convince talented designers to work with investors, and uh, it's not uh, it's not like uh, like uh, buying a product uh, you, you know lots of designers they do a project not because of the fees that they're going to get but because of the ambition of the project so that's very important and for that you need to invest a lot of time to 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 meet people designers owners ex and, and explore and you need also to to demonstrate uh, the performance of the designer through different examples and not only taking uh, example in the hospitality, but uh, in in different uh, in, in different business. If you one day I, I invite uh, the, the head of uh, of uh, Ubisoft, for example, explaining that they engage more than two hundred designer in order to create a, a game, and it's it's a much bigger investment than doing a, than doing a hotel. And they said that uh, it's very um, it's crucial for the success of the of the gaming because they are not designing a game they are designing an emotion and if the one who's playing that game get an emotion then it's going to work and it is exactly the ambition uh, the ambition uh, we have mm -hmm. and at Thales which is a really different company for example you know Thales it's a company who produce uh, 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 very technical uh, machines, for example, for the military, uh, uh, for the the, uh, the boats, uh, plane, uh, etc., etc. And before it used to be 100% engineers, and now they start having more and more designers because they said that if there is a good design, then we don't need so much designers. Finally, we find better way and better solution. Right, and, and I think that's a really interesting point, that, that really intangible nature of designing an emotion, designing something that's invisible. Um, when most people, you know, and I think everyone, this is probably the, the easiest way to, to think of what design is, is something that you can touch and feel, look at, looks pretty, uh, but really, you know, as, as you said, as we talked about at the start of this, that's about 20% of it. Yes. The other is so much more. And 
how do we how do we encapsulate that in a way that it's more tangible? But it's uh, it's you know that's uh, that's why it's a very uh, specific uh, let's say uh, uh, job designer uh, because uh, it's it's a it's a science in a way, uh, but uh, it's uh, very subjective. Uh, so so we try as much as possible to bring objectivity into subjectivity, but uh, it is very important. And you need to dare. And you know, lots of uh, uh, talented, and uh, we, we can name it, them as genius, for example, designers, used to be seen as utopic. And when the future comes, then they say, oh no, it's incredible what they have invented 50, 30, 30, 50 years ago. If you take uh, the Eiffel Tower, for example, or the Pyramid du Louvre, and there is lots of examples like this. At that time, at their time, they were really considered as a really a mad mad designers, utopic guys, etc. But with the acceleration of the evolution of the society, an utopic designer today is not an utopic, is a visionary, is some, mm -hmm. someone that we really need and quickly need because the world is evolving so fast that the utopic of today are finally the designer of tomorrow. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's a really great point too because you know, when you see that person that might have the crazy idea really ahead of their time. But then when you look back with the hindsight, you said, damn, could have used them in that situation or that was a great idea or that was, you know, I'm sure you must run into that as well from, from, you know, leading a course design function for the last 20 plus years. Um, I'm sure that's a conversation that you've had. Yeah. You know, that there is two architects, which I really love, uh, Mimeyer in Brazil or Le, Corbu Le Corbusier in, uh, in France. And uh, they, they designed uh, uh, more than 50 years ago, uh, uh, building like if they were designing a vertical village. And people were saying, well, that's very utopic project, etc." but they did it. Today, that's exactly what we are doing in the hospitality. Finally, an hotel is not an hotel anymore, it's a village where you can do everything. You can find good retails, shop, Place to work, place to 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 eat, to to live, etc. To meet people, and finally, we are creating now the hospitality of tomorrow. It's creating a village, and not 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 only a, a, an hotel, but to, tomorrow it will be a place with apartments, extended stay, co-living, hotels. It's going to be completely hybrid, and will be. Uh, uh, I, I strongly believe for our investors and for the needs of the people tomorrow, uh, uh, the, the, the next generation of the hospitality. Yeah, and I think maybe five years ago, maybe you guys were ahead of your time with work, life, and play and augmented hospitality, but man, that sped up and the time has met you now. Yeah, exactly. You know, with the Innovation Lab at Accor, we've worked on so many projects new concepts inside the hotel or outside the hotel. And, and definitely we were facing lots of difficulties because it was too early. And now I should not say that because COVID is, is, is terrible, but, but the situation we are living accelerates everything. And finally, the time to market is now. So, so for designers, it's, uh, it's an incredible uh, period today because uh, uh, we thought that tomorrow uh, was in 20 or 30 years and finally tomorrow is today. And, 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 and that will be, uh, I think we're going to have for the next five to 10 years, uh, uh, extraordinary uh, moment of, uh, of creativity and completely rede redesigning life in the city and finally really uh, um, uh, enhance the quality of life of people. And that's one of the main objectives of, of designers. You know, designers, they try to enhance quality of life, beauty, and, uh, and, and profitability, because that's, that's, that's something very, very important also for them. Well, Damien, I think we're just about out of time. I was going to ask you, what do you feel optimistic about looking forward? But I, I think you might have just uh, nailed it in, that, in your last answer there. 
Sounds like you have a lot to look forward to on the yeah. design front. I'm very optimistic because, you know, um, I think there is, a, of course, travelers, uh, people, I mean, uh, for, for leisure, the travelers, I'm, I'm not afraid. People will travel because they want to discover the world, etc. For business, it will be maybe a bit different. But it will come back. It will come back. It will take maybe one year or two years, but it will come back. But then there is another opportunity of growth. It's all the, the, the people who are living around the hotel. And believe me, we have a lot to do. We've done a lot already. I think we are, we are, we are ready, but there is still a lot to do for them. And it will completely, uh, uh, I mean, change the profitability of the hospitality tomorrow and the quality of life of people. So I'm very optimistic for the future. Well, Damien, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Matt. It's a pleasure. All right. Be well. Thank you.